Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Refuge Healing Church presents Watch God. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we study the Word of God. So be blessed and encouraged. And now, Inez Walker. Praise the Lord. We're so very glad today that you tuned in to Watch God. It's a blessed and a powerful day with the power of Jesus Christ working in your life. We want you to know right now that God loves you. He's concerned about your well-being. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in the judgment shall and will be condemned. Great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It is time right now in your life to be careful for nothing. In essence, everything that's around you or surround you is valuable to your future. You must realize that God is in charge of your life right now and in your future. We thank God that God is blessing you and he's keeping you. He's blessing your family. He's encouraging you to stay on the Lord's side. Everybody that is tuned in today in the hospital room, in the nursing home, at home in your sick bed, I want you to know that God is a healer. He is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. God is opening up deaf ears, blinded eyes. He's causing you to be revived in the name of Jesus. We curse every sickness and send it back to the pits of hell. We want you to know that God wants you to enjoy life now. Be about your father's business. Doing those things in life that God has called for you to do. We thank God for having his way in your life. Working those things out in your life when it seems like nothing was happening. I want you to know that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. He made a promise to you. He said, I promise above all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. We thank God today that you can call Dollar Prayer right now. Those numbers are 387-6361 or 325-7975. I want you to stay strong in the Lord. And if by some chance you can write us, write us at Post Office Box 490, where the zip is 71210. We thank you and we praise God for every letter, every card, every gift that you send to us. It's a blessing that God can cause you to be a blessing to us. It's not that that uh, it seems like nothing is working for you, but it's that you got your trust in God and he will work for you. Now I'd like to invite you to the healing service on Sunday at 8 o'clock in the a.m. and 6 o'clock in the evening. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is seeing you through right now. He's creating in you a clean heart and renewing the right spirit within you. We'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday services. They are, they are at 6 until... Where we feed the hungry and the needy. On a Friday night is Victory, is Victory Friday. Where you can come and receive the word and become victorious in your life. Not letting the devil steal your joy in Jesus name. Now on Sunday morning is Sunday school. Sunday morning worship is at 11.45 and Sunday evening worship is at 7. Except for the healing service. Services are at 8 and six in the evening. 
on on the fifth Sunday, we have men that are living for Christ. It's a blessing to come and be a part of that great service. Be encouraged. Know that God loves you. It's your chance. It's your opportunity to come and worship God in spirit and truth. I know him as a miracle healer. I know him as a provider. I know him, I know him as he will work everything out. No matter how long it takes, he got a way of working it out. You stay encouraged. You remember that God's word is true. Let him always bring our flesh under conviction so that we can stay in the perfect will of God. Not saying that you're not trying to reach for perfection. But if you got conviction in your life, there is no doubt in my life that you will reach for perfection. We're getting ready to go to the word of God and speak a word of prayer over you. That you will be a receiver and don't let the enemy make you reject the word. The word is true. And the word is powerful. It's like a two-edged sword. It cuts left and it cuts right. It guts you. It causes you to want to be the man and the woman of God that God is expecting of you. Let us pray. God, we come before you right now causing our life to be changed. Let us repent. Let us have the strength to say that I've done wrong. But Lord, I desire to do your will. Don't let me be a repeat offender of the things that keeps me down. But let me run and see what the end's going to be. In Jesus' name. I thank you for it being done right now. In Jesus' precious and holy name. How we thank you for it. We've been an escapee of sin in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God today comes. It is our desire to have the boy as anointing. Everybody wants to have the best for their life. Not only in wealth, but in health, in their job, with their family, with their children. We desire the help that God has for us. Now you must understand that we are faced with every, everyday crisis. But God has prepared us as soldiers in his army that we have on the breastplate of righteousness We have on our helmet. We are girded up. We're getting ready for war. We don't have to be, be in a place of, of, of not understanding that war is going to come. But we are ready and prepared for the hand that fights against us. Now you be encouraged. And know that God is able to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. We, we, we will now go to the book of Ruth. Where in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Naomi and Ruth returns to Bethlehem. Also in, in, in Ruth 1, Naomi loses her husbands and her sons. Then it goes on to tell us how Oprah did not want to reside with them for the whole ride. She left and went back 
to her own homeland. Ruth remained a faithful and a, 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 a loyal sister and a, a, a loyal daughter-in-law to her. And the Bible reads these words in Naomi, Naomi 2 verse 1, And Naomi had a kindred of a husband and a mighty man of wealth of the family of Amalek's, and his name was Boaz. This is her husband's kindred, making it her kindred's by law. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the fields and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the fields after the reapers. Her hap was a light on part of the fields belonging unto, the, unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Amalek's. What, what, what God is saying, go on my daughter and enter the fields and, and glean behind the harvesters. And she turned out she was working in the field belonging to Boaz who his kindred was Amalek which was Naomi's husband. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servants that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servants that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabites. Danzel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you let me gleam and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and had continued even from the morning until now that she tarry a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Heareth thou not, my daughter, go not to gleam in another's field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field, that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessel and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed to the ground and said unto him, Why have I, why have I found grace in thy eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, and seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It has fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how that thou left thy father and thy mother, which thou knowest not thereof, which, which has left thy father and thy mother in the land of nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest not there to for. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou that hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaiden, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaiden. And Boaz said unto her at mealtime, Come thither and eat the bread, and dip the morsel in vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he, he reached her porch corn, and she did eat, and was, suffi and was satisfied, suffice, satisfied, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded that his young men, saying, Let her glean. Boaz commanded 
his young man says, let her gleam among the sheaves and rep reproach her not and let and let falls also some of a handfuls of purpose for her and leave them and she may gleam them and rebuke her not. So she gleamed in the fields until evening and 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 beat out that she had gleamed and it was about a effort of bars barsley. Even though they left stalks behind for her, so that it would cause her to have bundles to put pick up and, and they did not rebuke her. They wanted to, her to have more than enough roasted grain so so when um, she could go she they would have leftovers so that she could glean the field so she could carry it back to town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also bought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Well, we know one thing that she worked and 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 the men blessed and took notice of her and the work that she was doing and and we know that when we do a good job for Jesus Christ that he takes notice and he'll leave us extra bonuses on our jobs he'll cause people to give us raises. Glory to God, because we're doing such a good job. This is the same type of, of, of relationship that God had with Boaz concerning Ruth. Leave her more than enough. Let her have extra so that they won't run out. And he told the men that, that served him, make sure that you have extra hands full to fall so that she will have more than enough when she began to glean. And, and, and by the way, don't rebuke her for what she's doing. Let her glean the fields until the evening. And, and we understand that it took, he took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleam and brought forth and gave her, and she had reserved after she was suffice. And her mother-in-law and 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 unto her, where hast thou gleaned today, and where wroth thou? Bless, be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law, which whom she was wroth, and said, the man's name which whom I wrought today is Boaz. And, and, and the thing that God wants us to understand, Ruth being her mother-in-law, uh, kind of directed her and, and, and what place she should be working, not the other fields that was in the city, but go and work in Boaz's field her husband's kindred. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, he, he has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, the man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. He is one of our next to kindreds. He's not only showing uh, kindness to, to us that is alive, me and you, Ruth, but he's also showing respect for my dead husband that he would let you come and gleam in his field. Can I get a witness there? And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go into the, to the women who work for him because in someone else's field, you may be harmed. He had already told the men there, uh, do not touch her, do not... Let harm come to her. So Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz to gleam until the barley and, and wheat harvest were finished. And she lived with her 
mother-in-law. I want to speak to you today concerning the Boaz anointing. The, the first thing that we must understand about Boaz, he was a wealthy land owner in, in, in Judea. Boaz uh, took what he had when he found favor with Ruth and caused her to be extraordinarily blessed because he had seen her good works. He had seen how hard she worked from morning to evening. And a lot of times you be on your job and you think nobody is paying attention to you. And I want you to know that what God did for Ruth and her and her boss, he'll do the same for you and your boss. Amen. The boy's anointing, the boy's anointing represents uh, I'm working for my labor. I, I'm not trying to cheat my way through. I'm, I'm not trying to run in the clock. I'm not trying to override the clock, but I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do, even if it takes overtime. She worked from morning to evening. In, in, in her efforts from working from morning to evening and not going to any other field, God rewarded her through Boaz to have more than enough. enough. She had a good harvest, a wheat harvest. Glory to God. A harvest that would make her and her mother-in-law, Naomi, financially able to sustain their living arrangements while they are there in Bethlehem, having a good status of, of, of livelihood. Now, you must understand that God uh, don't go back on his word. He didn't do it in those Bible days, and he will not do it now. All we have to do is be led by the Spirit of God. We must understand that it is time for us to just wait and know that God is going to work everything out. In spite of how it looks, when it looks like it's just not going to work, it's, it's just not happening. Everything around me is failing. Nobody's answering my phone calls. Nobody is giving me a, a, a extra time to get it together. I want you to know still God is in charge. God is in charge. He knows how to work it out, when to work it out. He knows just how to fix it. I want you to lay aside every weight and every sin today that stands in your way of progress. The Boaz anointing will absolutely clear, clarify that there is a great future in store for you. You must realize that God has thrust you in, path, in the path of education. He has thrust you in the path of having ears to hear. He has thrust you in the path of having many gifts and talent so that you may pursue your future. Boaz anointing keeps you from feeling like you are being intimidated. In other words, it will allow your integrity to manifest that the men and women of this world will know that God is with you. I want you to know that the that the harvest will be finished and it will be given in the abundance to your life. Stop being weary and well-doing and know that God is with you. I want you to understand, be reminded that the word of God is a must in your life. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Boaz anointing will empower you to live a blessed life that God has ordained for you. 
It'll keep you in good health even as your soul prosper. God right now is transforming your job to a great job with a special highlight from the Holy Spirit. Always remember to put God's work first. Pay your tithes. Be faithful in the position that you have with God. God's favor will transform your life. God is filling you with faith and strength that will, that will make you work for the household of faith. And what you make happen for the household of faith, he will make it happen at your house. It is time for you to let the fire of the Holy Spirit cause you to be anchored in the word of truth. God has a plan for you to be encouraged and walk in the overflow of blessings as you obey God. Let God lead you, order your footsteps. Take care of all the needs that you have just walk in his will. God is still releasing his abundance of blessings to those who honor, seek, and trust him. Let God's word transform, empower the revelation that will change your life forever. The pure love you have for God will unlock rewards, goodness, and your own business and preserve your life with great health. Debt-free homes, God, are, are awarding you according to your faith. God knows how to put a person in your life that can bless you. All you have to do is be kind-hearted and loyal. That is very important to the blessings of God. Stop being discouraged by your storm. God is going to bring you through every time. Just stay away from sin. I want to tell you that God is in the blessing business. He is blessing you right now. He wants you to stay encouraged. He wants you to keep looking to the hills and know that he is God. See you on next Saturday. Thank you for tuning in today's program. If you would like more information or need prayer, call 318-387-6361. We invite you to join us in one of our services as listed on screen. Our church is located at 506 South 6th Street, Monroe. Thank you for watching Watch God with Inez Walker.